I was playing a character called Harley, and he was he was kind of what I was at that age. He was a little rebel, you know what I mean? There wasn't much acting involved for that at that time. Yeah, it was a great experience for me, a great learning curve. For me, it was quite confronting. I'm, I'm from a town, I'm from a small town called Waito, and uh, very small-minded when it comes to people loving the same sex and stuff like that. So when I take on jobs and stuff like that, I kind of know I'm going to get a hard time in my town just because that's how it's kind of the system set up there and how it is. So like uh, that, that, that was probably the most daunting thing for me out of that was at that time and that age was probably dealing with my family and the people's feedback about me taking on that and about a role where my father was gay. My role as Juju, I, I loosely based him off one of my uncles in Wairo, to be honest. Yeah. And um, during that time of the shoot too, I would go back home and kind of watch my uncle at parties. And I had him the night he come up to me at one of the parties and he's like, Nephew, what are you bloody looking at me? I said, I, and I didn't want to tell him what was up, but um, I told him once the film was out that I had loosely based Juju on, on one of my uncles. Cohen Holloway, he's probably one of the hardest persons to work with because he makes you laugh so much. You know what I mean? It's, um, we had one point there we had Taika telling him, could you just shut up? Just because there was no work getting done, even Taika couldn't focus on directing because Cohen. Yeah, I guess that was that was the the highlight and the laugh for me. Well, that role was about uh, a, a lot of Maori youth in small towns and the problem with drugs in these small towns. It's still happening now. You know what I mean? Uh, I go back to Waitau and I see a lot of kids that haven't ever made it to 20 or 18 and uh, are caught up in that rut of drugs and that destructive life. Yeah, and it's very sad. I thought that role influenced me as an actor. There were some places that I had to go internally. There were some deep places in order to portray these emotions and be real about it. I was... Um, working with an amazing actor and an amazing human called Matt Whelan. He, he taught me a lot as an actor and as a human, and um, I, I drew a lot from him and learned a lot on that. And I, th I think that was mainly my process during that film was, like I said, in most of my roles was being truthful to, to the character and portraying his emotions and learning from Matt. I, I think I mean, Matt really bounced off each other on that film. We were shooting with the gorilla, uh, like gorilla units, so there were, I mean, and we're shooting in places that we weren't allowed. So, we would be asleep on a tram, and then we'll be getting woken up and saying that the security's down the other end of the train. We've only got five minutes to shoot, so, so we would get woken up and kind of got to get in character, and makeup will come up, and then we do it for these five minutes, and then we have another person down the train going, oh yeah, the security's coming back down, get the camera. And we had the cameras wrapped up in these jerseys, and the guy's sitting like this, kind of cover the cameras kind of thing. It was pretty epic, yeah. But it was good, I think it was um, good as an actor to, you know, just to get, have to bring it up like that. That role for me was quite enlightening. I think I was, I probably gave a lot of, very sorry for this too, I probably gave a lot of, um, a lot of gay brothers a hard time growing up, you know, in Waito and it's just, I didn't know any better. And <clears throat> for, for me, that role was enlightening, I mean, even having to take that on and knowing how people are going to look at me and just going through these emotions, just, just half of the emotions what these people are actually going through, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, I, I really grew as an actor and as a human as well, playing, playing Nasir. I kind of like the fact that every episode changes, you know, like so 
this murder mystery will this week will be evolved around golf and next week it'll be about fishing so it's like as an as as a human it's like okay cool i'm i've got four weeks of golfing coming up you know kind of thing of filming and well there's always that one maori that kind of knows a bit of everything about anyone and any location no matter what goes on in these small towns, there's always that one Māori that knows a bit about everything or anyone, you know what I mean? And I kind of base that that idea on, on Jared. I kind of base Jared on that idea, you know what I mean? With a bit of um, cheeky charm. And... Deadlands is probably one of the smaller budget films that I've worked on, but um, probably the most fun I've had on any job. And... Probably because I was working with a bunch of Māori, you know, so um, we, there was laughter every day and when they called action, the brothers were there, you know. As an actor, it was kind of trying to explore how, how my great-great-grandmother and grandfather would record it all and how their thoughts would flow and stuff like that. That, that was more the process for me. And uh, I, I really felt that as, as the emotions and thoughts come through, they would call it all at the same time, you know what I mean? So that's, that's kind of, I, I played with that. West Side, it's, it's probably one of my favorite jobs. Yeah, and a character that's far from myself. I mean, he doesn't, Bert doesn't know his roots. He doesn't know any Māori. He'll say Mary. And um, brought up in West Auckland, so I guess, Grew up around a lot of cars and a lot of motors and stuff like that. I based Bert on that. I think he's quite white, to be honest. Yeah, and it's a lovely process with, with Westside, him finding his roots. I think that was lovely for me to go through that for him. The character that I played, Tane, it was, it was kind of nice to, to play a Māori boy that it was quite well off you know, and can be confident in what he does because he doesn't have to worry about other stuff that, that poor people did have to worry about. I felt with the writing that um, I just thought, I thought Tang was kind of just the token brown boy on that, on that job, to be honest. Yeah, like they kind of just needed to have that, that part there. I, was, I think I was, yeah, Yeah, I think, um, like, in, in most New Zealand projects, they kind of got to have this... Yeah, yeah, and I, I think um, it, was, it was very obvious in, in that, you know what I mean, for me. It's a true story based on Chris King, who was... He watched some black powers attack a Mongol mob in the daylight while his kids... He was mowing the lawn and his kids were playing outside, so... He decided to go to stand up against these black powers and go into court and testify against them. And uh, he refused to go into witness protection. Well, he ended up getting um, shot and died. So for me, it was I was doing homework in my own time and finding out about as much as I can about Chris King and his far knowing what makes him tick. And, um, and doing justice to him and his, his cordial or his story. Yeah, it's, um, I felt really strong about that before I went into this. That's how it should be when, when, when telling a story. You know, it's, it's not about me anymore. I'm, hopefully, I'm, I'm Chris's vehicle. Yeah, I'm his vessel at the moment.